And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to game number two. I told you it was five minutes. I think it was less than five minutes now. LGD versus IG. IG up one game. Uh, I think surprising to a lot of people, but we all know that both of these teams are fairly close to each other and definitely could take games off of each other. Uh, I do expect this game go to a third game, though, because I don't think LGD are going out without a fight. Uh, yeah, I mean, possible. They they take out the Axe, so that's the one you called. I thought they'd rather take out the Bounty Hunter, but they decided it's the Axe. And IG take out, I guess that's the, yeah, LGD have first pick. So IG are like, well, we have to actually take out the Bounty Hunter this time. And wow, the draft is going really quickly this time. And they really pick Naga's Siren for IG, which... I'm wondering if that's going to be Ferrari's here in the mid lane, uh, QD's here in the safe lane, or if they might even run the off lane Naga Siren. I don't know if you caught that yesterday when Nubi played the off lane Naga. It's something that Nubi have done a few times. Um, K KP playing off lane Naga Siren, and if the game warrants it, he converts into the one position. Um, they've done very well. Nubi have done very well with it, so I guess that the Naga could be in any position at this stage. Alright, I don't know exactly why, but I'm not getting my Dota sound. Dota is not muted. What I'm going to do is actually to restart Dota right now in the draft. So, okay. you could cover the draft for now. Sorry, Scans. Here's some radio draft. That's fine. Um, LGD have just picked Ember Spirits. So, also a very interesting pick to see in the first phase. Doom and Ember. Other side, Lion and Naga. Um... Yeah, I, I suppose that with the last game, IG banning out two aggressive heroes for fighting early on in the second ban phase, LGD recognized that if, if they want one of those heroes for aggressive, they might need to pick it early on. I mean, maybe also plays Ember Spirits, so it's actually not clear whether it'll be a maybe on aggressive Ember at this stage. But obviously, Ember Spirits is one of the better heroes against Naga Siren, especially a call Naga Siren, one of the better heroes for cutting through the the illusions very quickly and unlike Phantom Lance, Naga can't just permanently make the new illusions. She makes a set, if you slide them all down, now she's got no illusions for like 20 seconds. So is there any possibility of this being a support Naga at all? Yeah there is. There's I I, I think it can be any position Naga. I, I really do. I just I mean the the only reason I I, I, I I bring this up is, you know, remember last game, Wyvern filled a similar capacity? as a hero that delay fight or draw the fight to allow the other heroes to come in and Solemn Siren is actually one of the better tools to do something like that, right? If you want to play yeah. in a support capacity. Yeah, I, I definitely think it could be a support Naga. I just, for some reason to me, like, first phasing Naga, it just feels like a dramatic in a way that, like, this is probably a core. Okay. Like, it's, it's, it wasn't going to be contested. Like, I, I really don't think Naga was going to be banned. I don't think LGD were going to pick Naga. They take it early because it's like a substantial part of the direction of their draft. And I think that that's the case more for a core Naga than a support Naga. The thing is, when you pick it up so early, it invites counters, like the Ember Spirit, you know. First phase pick. Yeah, you're right. If, so if they so want it, as a core, I mean, it could be either. If they want as a core, they could take out some of the counters and then pick out second phase. So I, I don't really know. Uh, Invictus Gaming are throwing us all in a loop. But LGD is... Definitely complying with the, the the possibility of a core Naga be picking up Ember, second phase ban. It's very interesting that IG themselves uh, do take out the the Alchemist. Uh, well, they've got the Naga, and for me, that's like an even further sign that that's well, going to be the. It, it's more that like I think Alchemist plus Ember Spirit might be too greedy to to be ran together as a lineup, but you know. But. But they don't have the Ember Spirits. They... No, sorry. I, I that's what I mean. Like IG. You mean Alchemist and, and Naga Siren? No, Ember plus Alchemist is very greedy. So I think IG is okay for LGD to have Ember plus Alchemist. Thus, they don't need to ban the Alchemist. But then why do they ban? Yeah, that's they what ban I'm the asking. Why why do they ban the Alchemist? Like I don't think they. Oh, need to. okay. Yeah. I see. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um. I. So my feeling again yesterday the. At the epicenter match where Nubi played Naga Siren was against Sumail playing Alchemist. And it was it was a win for Nubi, but it was very close and the Alchemist gave them a lot of trouble. It was like one of the few heroes that could keep up with the sort of dominant farm control of the map and you know Naga Siren is the, they're the only two heroes that could do like the Octarine Mansa push all the waves sure. kind of thing. Effectively. So I, I think it is possible. It's just like we've got this late game insurance with the Naga Siren pick. Um, and if you don't have an alchemist, there's nothing that competes with it. And 
but I mean, again, I keep going to the fact Newbie have been picking this hero for the offlane, and they play it as a regular offlaner, and then if the if they're dominating, it's just an offlaner, and if they if it's the game's kind of even or they're struggling, it becomes a super farm one position. It converts, and I think it's something they could do here. Ig with the slaughter pick, it's, it wouldn't surprise me that much to have slaughter as like a hyper early game orientated safe laner with the offlane naga and the the potential for those two to switch around because slaughter once he has his first few items doesn't really need more farm in the game and you're either in this position where you're steamrolling like last game or you're not and then it, it falls back into the naga right so i think what lgd should be looking for is uh get themselves in a position where if the naga is not steamrolling you have enough space controller to either push very hard to end the game before she gets big or control the map where she doesn't have space to farm. It looks like LGD is taking the former route with a little bit of push here uh, with Visage being picked up. So, are we leading into yeah. a Drow Ranger? With two Draw melee cores? Yeah, and yeah it's I like, don't know. Seems unlike. Recently, the OG has been running Drow with DK, but DK is like sort of kind of ranged. Hybrid, yeah. So, yeah. Um, Visage is just a hero that uh, Chinese teams have always loved. Like, same as Doom, same as Dragon. There's like a few heroes that seem to come up all the time. Lifesteal is one of them. Visage, I feel like, in the West, you'd hardly ever see a Visage pick without a Drow these days. But I, I don't think it necessarily says anything about Drow for LGD. And... I wonder if this is a old school counter to Naga, where Naga basically song and TPs out as a free escape. Visage birds do not get slept. Visage birds will cancel your TP if you do just channel it. So. I wonder if just picked for that. I don't know if it's enough justification, but it's definitely one up on the Naga, I guess. Ten seconds to go. That's an interesting idea. For some reason, I thought that was changed, but uh, it might it might be changed. I mean, I'm working with old data. I think there's, so. there's something that like I think they I'm trying to think what I think they changed that uh, pandas ulti that needs to get slept and not does, and I I. I'm not sure if Visage Birds. I'm not, like these are the kind of things that come up so rarely when it's like specific units against an Naga ulti that you don't. A lot of the knowledge that we have when we are analyzing Dota comes from just like watching and playing lots of Dota. So you need to see things a lot. Right. Um, so I guess if if I, I definitely agree with you, that's something that used to be like a old school concept. I'm not completely sure if it still works. We'll have to see if it comes to it. But LGD picking up the Venge, I kind of agree with you now that. With Avenge, the Visage, and the Doom all together, there's definitely a push element to their draft. Like, if they get an advantage, they can push pretty pretty quickly. Now, if this is like Virtus Pro or another CIS team playing, I'd be like, hey, this is looking like the making of Avenge carry lane, where you have essentially nothing but single ta single target burst damage, and you just go ham on whoever the off lane is. Given that he this has... is LGD, the likelihood of that happening is like next to zero, but... But, but this is there. new LGD, right? This is new LGD, aggressive is their safe laner, and Venge is a hero he's, he's played before. It's not one of his mains, but I have seen him play it. Um, Burning was playing a lot of Venge when he was back when he was on Vichy Gaming, when he was still playing carry. So there are some Chinese teams that have dabbled in the, the carry Venge, and I think aggressive is one of the better suited players to it. But at the same time, I do agree with you that it's like... I, <laughs> intuitively, I, I, w I would guess against it for LGD, right. but IG banned the draw, so... They, they see that as like a potential threat here, with the Venge and the Visage being enough, like those two ranged heroes, plus like the, the stacking of auras, enough of a threat to them early on. Is this a Lycan pick time for OGD? I mean, we're talking about well, aura, push, aura pushing. Yeah, and it's it's very good with the Ember, because unlike the Drow, the Lycan actually gives the Ember extra damage uh, with slides. Yeah. So, that could actually be the pick here. I don't know... It must be aggressive. Must be able to play like, and I'm, it doesn't like in my memory. I can't think of a time I recently saw him playing it, but I don't think it's like especially technical hero. It's not. So. Well, it's it's technical in the sense that you need to know certain timings with the hero because there there's a very uh, key moment in the game where you have to kind of flip the switch and just give up the split pushing game and kind of go for more of like right click late game kind of carry hardcore carry playstyle. And that might be difficult for somebody that hasn't played it. But a Shadow Fiend, so a different take to the Aura push. I've been missing this so hero good. quite a bit, and maybe it looks like he's going to be playing at mid, right? Yeah, so aggressive will play Ember, nice, and then nice. it goes back to what I was saying at the start. I'm like, so he hyped. Gets, they get his hero early. Ooh. And... Alright, Shadow oh. Fiend's one of the, the easier to gank heroes, and now you have Sparrow Breaker. 
I don't know what the lanes are. It looks like 430 is going to play in mid for now, selecting the Naga Siren. Maybe it's going to be playing the Shadow Fiend. I, I'm super stoked for this trip. They're, so their they're off lane is playing Lina. Like, do you think he'll be in the off lane as Lina? That doesn't seem likely. Like, I, I imagine IG will be mixing up the, the way that they lane. Things. Perhaps this is offensive trialing coming out from uh, IG. Yeah, it could be. I mean, because it's going to be a one v one. Visage is pretty good in a 3v3. That's the only thing I'd be concerned about. Visage is probably the best hero in the game for a 3v3, in my opinion. Because any time yeah. there's any kind of skirmish going on, you have full soul, uh, soul assumption charges. So, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think it's like maybe Witch Doctor is a bit of an argument, but I it, I would probably go with Visage as well as the strongest for that situation. That's why I'm I'm not too sure. The, the one thing that's clear from IG's draft is that they're still going for aggression, right? This is not. Like, this is not a Naga draft. This is still, like, no matter how they land it, this is a draft where, like, Naga's the backup plan. And the other pick suggests that they, they're hoping to be able to play the momentum game like they have been so much recently and, you know, fall back on the Naga if need be. Well, this is the Naga game in the sense that if this game goes past, like, the 30-minute mark and IG doesn't have a giant lead, they need a, a carry that can finish the game. And Naga is really the only one in the draft that could do so, right? So in a sense, yeah, it yeah, is a yeah. Naga game, right? You, you need Ferrari to get that Radiance in. And, and but get she's, she's plan B, that's what I'm saying. She's yeah. like, they prefer to get lots of kills with Spirit Breaker and Slaughter and Lina and Lion zapping people all the time. Sure. Uh, I really just want to see how this Lina lands because it does look like it's going to the off lane. I, maybe it'll just be a dual lane with the Spirit Breaker and Lion going top of Slaughter. That seems like a pretty good lane actually to me. September does start with Boots of Speed on the Ventral Spirit, so if it's a trialing versus trialing, that should give them a little bit of an edge, having a way to open up uh, the initiation. And then why gonna be playing the Visage? He he plays it so well yeah. for such a long time. Like again, going back to Dota One so many years ago. Yep, I mean he's got lots of games on record with that hero. All right, and maybe he's gonna take the first rune for himself and. Looks like Ferrari taking the bottom one. All right, How, who do you think wins the mid lane? We, we don't really get a chance to talk about mid matchup between Shadowfiend and Naga Siren. I mean, if it's one v one, Shadowfiend wins for sure. I think it's like he likes being against these melee heroes. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, he, like unless you completely shut him out from the beginning and he just gets no creeps, but I feel like that's just going to be difficult to do here. Yeah. And once he gets to like level 3 with a bunch of souls, I, I think he definitely gets more from the lane than the Naga. He won't, by the same token, he won't shut the Naga out completely, she'll be able to get farm. But I think the SF will get more out of the lane than the Naga, and, unless he's just being charged and killed all the time. Yeah, that's the other factor uh, that we haven't really touched on, because it was the last pick of the draft. How often do you think Rong's gonna basically head mid? Because once you get the charge with the net, as well as, let's say, mirror image, or you know, even better, t Riptide, kills should come very easily. Yeah, I think I would say very often. <laughs> I would say that's like a significant part of their plan. Right, fair enough. And it's uh, like you expect that Lina in the offlane already completes a magic wand, a good idea against the, the bursty trialing. And uh, so far we don't see any charges yet, nor any good observer were protecting the mid lane. That's definitely one thing that you need to be actively aware of, is having like some sort of vision around this area of the map, just, you know, seeing that charge coming in. Yeah, the the one interesting thing I've seen Spirit Breakers do in response to that though is you could get a TP scroll and like TP mid and then charge from a different angle and that's fair. Sometimes you catch people unaware if that's what they do. Um, he's bought his Orb of Venom now, and I think he might wait for no, actually he's wrong. Sells Orb of Venom, buys his own magic stick. I, I think he might wait for level two before he starts charging. Right. But I mean, he definitely once he is level two. two we'll, yeah. Yeah. You you need the you need the 16, 17 percent auto bash. I mean, I would literally the, just like stay in lane and start hitting creeps, and if I don't see a bash like in five attacks, I charge mid. Yeah, and LG don't really have like the supports are not well suited to TP in mid and save Shadow Fiend if he's getting charged. All right, charging against okay. aggressive. I'm not sure about that one. Now, wrong in a lot of trouble. Magic missile is not available, but so assumption the chain does not hit on wrong. Lucky him, and uh, he will survive. That's like. Pretty incredible. He like, I think the play ends up being pretty good for IG considering he survives because yeah. you waste quite a lot of mana of the enemy team. That's like the only clarity the Venge has, the only clarity the Visage has. So if you could get them to waste spells one more time, like suddenly you'd be in a strong position in the lane. Yeah. 
but it was very close to Spirit Breaker dying, so I, I mean, don't know. Yeah, if Spirit Breaker gets, uh, gets Shane D set. Actually, though, here comes another backstab. Here comes the first hit bash, but XSS is still gonna be dead. I say that, though. Good charge coming out here. This fair fire is not gonna be enough. Will they lose Ron? Ron thinking about trading a couple of hits. Not having vision of the rune, uh, this Observer Ward. Allowing Bench to kind of walk behind and set up a very easy first blood for the team. Yeah, so... Yeah, I mean, we, I was trying to look for ways to justify the aggression from the Spirit Breaker Lina. Well, they, again, more aggression. Lina comes back in and Bench is going really low here. Yeah, no bash needed there. Just uh, big right clicks. I mean, the point I'm trying to make, like, if, you, if you're able to successfully sort of trade aggression, as a Lena Spirit Breaker against this really strong like tri lane, then you've kind of like done your job, definitely. I it, it felt like before they got the Avenge kill, it felt like okay, it's starting to just fail. They're trying to get that value out of the lane, they're not getting it. But if it if it ends up being like trades, even if they're being out farmed, the occasional kill trades, I think it's definitely a success for IG. And remember, Spirit Breaker, you know, now he's got boots, and he's level two, so those those mid charges are going to start coming soon. I I think. I mean, they're definitely getting out farm in the bottom lane, but like you said, that's not really what we're looking for. It's just how much is XSS going to get out of this lane, and we are going to see a charge coming to the bottom. Now, Spirit Breaker can actually just use chains to uh, stop the charge before it hits, provided there's no enemy nearby and he sees it coming. Uh, we'll see if it's going to hit. Lina should be moving into position to follow things up. Looks like he is using charge to get into lane. Yeah, a little bit quicker. And that's going to be it. So, the thing I'm surprised about is that we're four minutes in, it's nightfall, there's no charge going mid. I guess they just think it's like too obvious of a play. Like there's a, this ward over here yeah. will very likely show the Spirit Breaker charging past. So, maybe they feel like it's such a scripted thing, LGD would definitely expect it, let's rather just not waste time doing it. Yeah. Um, the other thing they could be doing is like you said, uh, teleport to either mid or top and just, you know, charge differently. But I think... Uh, yeah, so the... He has a TP scroll, so yeah. I think that actually might be a play that comes up. I think they're just more focused on getting Lina a little bit more farm here. How, how are we doing on the top lane here? It's Doom at 15 CS and Slaughter at 35 and 5 to 9, so... Not exactly too surprising that uh, the Slaughter is really winning the lane, especially with the help of Line. Looks like uh, as we saw Slaughter TPing out on the bottom lane, they made a go on the Lina. There was for no spur around. Yeah. So this gank better work. And I do believe... Shadowfiend should expect it, because with them going on the Lina and there was no help from the Slaughter, you know he's missing yeah, a he, map. He might not know the Lion's there, that could be like the clincher, but... I, like, I think these three heroes kill him even on the tower, but they have to just get onto him. Right. So, it's kind of like a double whammy for IG, you know? They can't protect the Lina, and the next gang failed because Lina died. Well, they can kill Doom now, though. He's just used a Scorched Earth. I, well, I don't know, they? the Slaughter's pretty far. They actually just, like, lose this vision off of him. Uh, as okay, he walks around good. the tree, so that is very, very <laughs> unfortunate. Um, farm wise, Naga Siren actually has slightly more creeps than Shadow Fiend, and that's the SF farming jungle a bit more than Naga, so Ferrari's definitely done well in this lane. I thought he'd get a little bit less, but turns out, you know, I didn't think he'd get much less, I thought he'd just get a little bit less, but apparently not. Yeah, uh, I wonder what the mid game mid game game plan for IG is because you know something that you touched on earlier is that IG this is essentially for protect one but they need to be doing stuff and uh, I guess it's on the back of QD because he's the only one that's really having a good laning stage he's already got the treads normally you see safe lane slaughter make a pit stop on the armlet I don't think he could get away with that this game I think he needs to blink because the laning stage yeah. hasn't been going too well for the team yeah, I think you're right. And actually, the from what I've seen, the omelet builds don't have they don't go treads even. They just go boots, omelet, blink. So okay. I think th almost the fact that he went treads suggests that that's going to be all he gets before the blink. And uh, the other big deal is just Lena and Lion getting level six, Spirit Breaker getting level six. I think if you have Slaughter, Blink, and the other three heroes of level six, then you're actually in really good fighting shape in terms of like making some pickoffs. Well, level six are not coming soon. I'm, I'm sure somebody will be level six as a Tome of Knowledge rolls around. Spirit Breaker thinking about charging in here. If Xiaowei gets a little bit too close, he will be charged, and that should result in a kill. Although Scorch Earth, as well as a Stout Shield, is available to Xiaowei. Yeah, Slaughter is pretty strong though, with that Amplified damage. Probably take like, a Bash. 
But now that Zim's level 6, that also makes it a lot more difficult for them to kill him. And September has just been zoning out Boboko at the mid lane. He's gonna get charged for. They need a hex his, to follow uh, up. Uh, I think September shouldn't die here. The charge will follow through, but no, it looks like he cancels it last minute. Slowly, I feel like LGD is winning all three lanes. I mean, yeah, top is it, kind of a wash, but mid and bottom is definitely a win for LGD. It comes back mostly to the very unorthodox IG aggressive duel lane with Spirit Breaker and Lina, which I feel like could be really, really strong in a 2v2. But when both enemy supports are there, it's, it's just like never going to be possible for them to get as much value. And they were, they flirted with it. There was a stage where I thought, okay, they're getting some kill trades. Like maybe that's enough for them in this lane. But after that, they kind of got ch chased out of the lane. The lane has been pretty under leveled. And look at this, like the Visage is level six, sending familiars to Ras Lina, who's meant to be the core, the three position in this game. She's not. She's just got level five. Yeah. Visage able to pick up a couple kills in the lane is very big as well. And now we're moving into a stage where like a Spirit Breaker support that is not, you know, having two or three kills under his spell is pretty much useless. Especially in the mid game where a lot of these heroes on the side of LGD could just stop a charge. Magical Missile is easy, chains are easy, and then, you know, Visage could drop some birds. Looks like we're gonna see a little bit of jump here against XSS. All of these uh, birds are coming in. They will charge on aggressive, but he's gonna be able to get one kill. Can they get a little bit more? Shadow Fiend's in the fight as well. Shadow Fiend comes in and gets another. No more mana for aggressive to keep on chasing, but they don't need to. They'll have a couple birds as well as a full creep wave. They're gonna get a tower as well. So Blink Dagger timing, it's here for the slaughter, and he needs to make it count. Like it's he needs to find like three, four kills. It looks like it might yeah, gonna start this... on the mid lane. The charge's gonna come through against Xiaoyi. He pops the fire, so blink stun, it's gonna hit onto two. Can it kill Xiaoyi? That's a question. T Ping coming from the Lina as well. Two more people being stunned. They get one. They're looking for a second hero. Blink stun coming off cooldown soon. One second. Nobody really be able to cancel it. Laguna Blade to follow things up. Are they chasing for more? The blink crush, it will hit on MMY. It's looking good right now. The charge will follow through. No, he cancels it. QD now in a lot of trouble. Lina drops an LSA, but she will not save QD. Maybe picks up yet another kill for joining this. First two kill, great, and then IG gets a little bit greedy, and then they get punished. Yeah, I, th I think both teams got a little greedy there. Like, LGD, it, it shouldn't be happening. Slaughter TP's in, Blinks and Stomps too. Lina TP's in with a delayed TP and stuns the same two heroes standing together. Like, I feel like it's because LGD was staying around, weighing their options, considering still taking the fight when the Slaughter arrived, and that's why the Lina caught them both as well. So I think both teams took a turn to be a little bit greedy with what they're trying to get out of the fight there, and they both got punished a bit for it. I still think that the, currently the advantage of the game is definitely favoring LGD and IG in terms of when we talk about their plan A aggression, plan B Naga, their their plan A is still alive, but it's it's it's, it's not far from dead. Yeah, yeah it's, it's it's fading away. <laughs> it's definitely fading. Uh, they're gonna have maybe a couple more ganks in them. It will start on the bottom lane. Bubuka does have that uh, level six finger of death as well. Unfortunately, they didn't pick him up along that smoke, so they lose a lot of that burst damage that they sorely need to get the kills. The other thing that you touched on is, yeah, both these teams are trading, but um, the LG lineup are much more forgiving in that sense. Like, LG, LGD could, like, maybe lose one or two fight and still make the comeback. IG right now, their plan A, they can't lose any more fights. Yeah. Uh, and it's we, it's... we're very quickly getting to the point where a lot of the LGD heroes are actually too tanky to get easily burst down, and IG have to commit lots of things to kill one hero, which is not what they wanted. They kind of wanted to be snowballing in the sense that you know, Slaughter jumps one, they kill that person, they get another one with Lina's ulti, another one with Lion's ulti, and suddenly they're steamrolling, taking kill after kill after kill, and I think LGD have already escaped that window, yeah. where it's I mean, easy for IG to like pick lots of heroes in one go. If you look at Jowie's item choice, he's not even worried, right? There's a Slaughter on the other side, and he picks up a Minus. Like, normally this is where Puppy picks up a Buckler, just to, you know, be a little bit sturdier in the early game, so... I think LGD feeling confident at the, the position that they have in this game, so let's take a moment and talk about Shadow Fiend's item choices. He's got the basics, right? He's got the Helm of Dominator, he's got Ring of Aquila, a lot of uh, armor items here and there. What is the first big item? Is it going to be Hurricane Pike? Is it going to be a standard SMY? Are we looking for first item BKB? Probably not. Uh, are we going to see something special like a Yule Scepter, Aghanim Scepter kind of thing? Well, he's, he's got the Ogre Club here, so it's, it's one of those Ogre Club items. Um, Dragonlance could be good. Yeah. S and Y used to be pretty standard on this hero. We talked about before how you know the nerf to how much you slow people when you maim them is 
is something worth thinking about. I actually, I'm not that opposed to him getting a fast BKB. I think he'd be pretty much invincible if he did. Well, I think he'd have like no, 10 minutes of thing, invincibility. Though, if he, BKB is actually actively bad in my opinion because against a Naga, you get songed and you get netted, suddenly it's 5v1. So, uh, that's true, and they do have a slot out to amp you, so they could actually kill you even through a BKB. So, I, I, uh, while yeah, as well as Nether Strike, like, I, I think BKB is literally a game losing item if he picks up early, but, you know, he's Ferrari. I guess it or depends, like, for me it's, for me it's like, we're not yet at that point where that's really a viable strategy for IG. Like, I, I think, I, I want the Naga to be a little bit stronger before that stage. Like, I feel like if you were to go BKB here, the plan would be... They actually hit an early timing where they group up and take all the towers sure. right after they got the BKB. You know, this also could have been like the return of uh, the Aura Shadowfiend build with the mech pickup. But uh, looks like that isn't the case here. Uh, I was expecting Doom to pick it up as well, but you know, he went Midas. But for now, it looks like we see a big wrap around here. Uh, I believe that's LGD scanning up ahead, not finding anybody. They're gonna rotate up top through the jungle, trying to look for somebody, but nobody's there again. So, they're gonna set up with the free tier 1 tower. Yeah. Uh, there will probably be a tier 1 loss to the bot lane, but they'll also get the top. So they're gonna get 2 for 1. And LGD, I think, quite intelligently playing together, grouped up quite close to each other. And they, they kind of know that IG's plan A involves bursting people down, picking them off when they're alone. And they have a lot of tools for killing people who are isolated. But if no one's isolated, IG kind of get forced back into a corner where they, they their game plan has to become about the, the Naga Siren. Well, unfortunately the Roshan sneak is not going to be a sneak as uh, somebody parked a, a fat ogre in here. Scout things out and I don't think they have the physical damage to really make things work. Uh, there is a Naga song to kind of essentially steal the Roshan and get out but again that warrant you having enough damage to, to deal with Rosh. And the Shadow Fiend is going BKB. He's spot the recipe in his stash so All right. I think it's actually going to be LGD going for earlier timing even though they you know, the Doom going Midas stuff like that. Bottom lane, they... Aggressive is gonna get Blink Charge, Finger's gonna come through, they have barely enough burst to get him killed, but they do have enough. And this is, again, another time where he could maybe chase for a little bit more. I think I hear a drums being popped on the Radiant side, Birds might be in a little bit of trouble, MMY drops it, and that'll be end. It's a... It's a die side, it's Lina has got the drum, actually. Okay. Um, and there's a Relic now on Naga Siren, so gonna have the Radiant soon, and... I, I feel like the BKB on the SF is kind of like get ahead of that timing. It's kind of like Naga has Radiance and she's trying to farm Travels, Manta, Octarine and you want to get a lot of value out of the game while she's farming those items because she's not actually that strong while she has just the Radiance and is farming up to those key items. And I think that that's LGD want to just take advantage of that window where that's she's farming for BLT coming in against Aggressive and you do see that song being committed but XSS cancel one TP, the second TP not being cancelled and uh, well Science, we do now know the birds still do work under the song, and MMY has got years of practice doing that against Naga players. Yeah, so okay. definitely showing the value that it provides against the, the Naga's song. That was a pretty sick gank, right? Uh, Shadow Fiend covering a, uh, the, the Mud Golem creep, and then you know stunning as the Emperor TP's in, essentially to set up a, a ganking squad out of nowhere. And now they're gonna get themselves an Aegis. I'm gonna say once LGD has the Aegis, plan A for IG is dead. Like, they have to just yeah. win through Naga now. They, they can't win through gank anymore. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I wonder if they'd consider fighting like with the Naga, like using the Radiance actively now. They are smoked up, so they're considering doing that, but uh, that's, you know, we talk about win through Naga, usually that's not what we mean. We don't mean go hit people with your Radiance, we mean like farm lots of items, split up, control the map, split push. We mean never um, fight again. Yeah, but it, it looks like they're still interested in their plan here. They want to fight a bit, and so Ferrari was like hanging oh, around. QD, gotta be, gotta be careful. Shadow Fiend channeling that Requiem. I do believe that's a Dire Sentry, so you do see Mace maybe waltzing around. Which, by the way, completely uh, unrelated to this game. I recently watched uh, Civil War, the Captain America movie. And I have to say, the, the Winter Soldier walks like Shadow Fiend. He's got that swagger. The, the, the Dota 1 Shadow Fiend. The, the swaying back and forth. I don't know. Yeah, uh, he, he kind of does. He, does. Right. he, look, he like walks a... like a boss. Like, uh, Unfortunately, the, the Dota 2 model Shadow Fiend is not very boss-like. He's alright. 
Yeah, but he's got the he's got the symbols, so the he can like do that taunt instead. Sure. It's meant to make up for it. But I haven't seen maybe doing any taunts. Yeah, um, they're, they're he does have it attached, so <laughs> he's not about that life. Yeah, just not his style. Yeah. All right, I mean LGD to me they got complete map control, right? Or not map control, but they're able to walk up to any tower they want and just take it for free. So I imagine LGD is gonna be doing just that. Yep, it's. I I I think uh, it sounds like we're oversimplifying, but I really think it is like now it's a uh, Naga Dota. Like for IG, it's do you get to the stage where your Naga can like lock down the map, and maybe in between your teammates make the occasional pick off to slow down the timings of the enemy team. But that's that's their game as far as IG is concerned. I think. Yeah. So. Essentially, we have one team to basically play keep away. Aggressive is gonna jump away. Unfortunately, the charge was like on a creep. A little bit of misclick. All right, I guess we're gonna be strapped in for maybe like, you know, 20 more minutes of farming if LG can push high ground. Uh, well, it could be actually much more if LG can push high ground. Like it could be like yeah. one more hour of this. Hey, why okay. stop at one hour? Could be two and a half more hours. Sure. I'm, <laughs> I'm down. I don't know. But again, LGD, they went for the early rush. They went for the rush BKB on the SF. So I think it does suggest that they want to get a lot out. Like, if not finish the high ground, they want to take all the outer towers, like, soon. In, in the next, I'd say, five, ten minutes. Right. And they're, they're probably going to do that relatively soon. I mean, there's a couple of TPs being drawn up top. Which, by the way, uh, what do you think about Slaughter's Echo Saber? It does proc your bash, right? I mean, you get one more chance here at least. Yep, it's pretty cool. Also, we were talking about the mana last game. Slaughter is actually a very mana light hero. So yeah. I think just that Echo Saber, you'll probably never run out of mana. You could just like stay out on the map. Um, you could basically use Crush doesn't... to farm, uh, whereas normally you just can't. Yeah. Um, but the, the damage output's good as well. It's yeah, I think it's not nice. even gives them some attack speed. Like, sure. yeah. something Slaughter needs. Alright. Is it better than omelets? I guess, like, how do we de ev evaluate something like that? Well, I think against, catch against Doom specifically, omelet might not be the best item. Oh, it looks like there was a pickoff. Sorry for missing that one. It was just randomly in the jungle. Yes. Bubble Cut just found him? Question mark? No, they were, they were, the Slaughter was actually farming here, and the Lion was kind of next door, and they saw, because they have this ward, they oh, saw him like, up. coming up the ramp. I see. Just jumped on him. Alright, sorry for missing that one. Yeah, so the, the point I was trying to make earlier as uh, the Doom goes on QD, this is why you don't have armlet. Because when your armlet's turned on and you get Doom, you're in bad shape. Uh, QD is going to yeah. buy all his items before he dies. It looks like he's going to be going for S and Y. QD, nowhere to go. Right. And he's going to be dead. That's, I mean, Echo Save is one thing, but Yasha and Slaughter is a very, very rare thing to see. Yeah. So, I mean, S and Y is still good value on the hero, but it's. You know, you, you almost expect to see a BKB, right, at this stage, but I guess the style that they're playing is, you know, BKB is the item you get if you want to fight, and I think they recognize. We, we play pick-offs while our Naga farms, but it's Boboko actually getting picked off at the bot lane. Yeah. Um, I think that's okay, though. Every time they lose two heroes, but if they get one in exchange, for example, the Ember kill that they got earlier, I think it's okay. Like, when you play the style of Naga Siren, you do expect to fall behind, like, slightly, slowly, slowly. But what you do get exchange out of it is, you know, Ferrari's gonna whittle the tier 1 tower, he's gonna whittle the tier 2 tower, and eventually, maybe, he could get to the Raxus. Maybe. I mean, I mean, he's, like, Ferrari's already got travels in Yasha that's pretty fast after he finishes Radiance, and it's just the Mansa and the Octarine you need. And once you have those, you're online. Like, you, I mean, obviously the hero wants to max out, but if he finishes the Mansa and the Octarine, he's kind of online in the sense of, on his own, he farms the whole map and pushes all the waves, and <laughs> look at this, XXS actually goes back for Midas on Lina. Dude, so, we know, man. I mean, if they're going to win, they're going to win in like an hour, right? They're not going to win anytime yeah. soon, so... Might as well exactly, so if we if they go for the, like, now build, it's just like self-defeating, so might as, everyone might as well just play the in, yeah. kind of investment build. I mean, literally, this is why, like... I need to buy one of those uh, 
Chinese like rice hats. Like for moments like these, like, you just wear it for the next hour. And, and do you will... think do you think Lion should buy Midas instead of Blink? <laughs> no, I think Lion so... specifically need to buy Blink because you know how you said yeah. earlier once like sometimes you find that one or two random pick off. That's probably from yeah. Bobuka getting a Blink. Yeah, just just because he's a Lion, I I think I agree. I was just wondering like how far we'd push the the Spirit Breaker long definitely game. buy Midas though for sure. Yeah. Uh, if he doesn't die here, which he will. Alright. If he, if he can ever afford it, it would yeah. be a good investment for him. Well, Ferrari gets a tower at the bottle in the meantime, gets a lot of farm. Yeah, Ferrari says more. That's gonna... It's like most of his Mansa's done. He's, what, 600 gold away from finishing Mansa. And... LGD, like, they... I'd still put them in control of the game, but they're not... I would have liked to have seen them get a little bit more than they have. Uh, during this stage, between when Naga got Radiance, and Naga farmed to more items from the Radiance. I mean, what? Yes, we would like to see them get more, but the reason why the the game score is nine to five right now it's because LG is grouping up. They're not getting more, but they're also not getting picked off, right? They're playing the ultra safe. We know we're stronger. We're gonna move as a pack of four or five. We're not gonna get picked off, and we're gonna take your towers. Um, it makes a, for a very boring game on the spectator like point of view, but I think that's probably the safest way to win, right? As soon as you just randomly get picked off by slaughter here, line there. Then the game could really just go out of hand, because... Uh, Lina's trying to kill SF. That's... Wow, nearly solo killed him. Alright. Wow. That's... Like, she just used her combo on the Shadow Fiend, and if Venge hadn't been there to swap away, I think her right clicks would have finished off that kill. Manta BKB. And, uh... Yeah, I guess Lina with Midas and Drum, and, like, Fiery Soul, you use your three spells and you actually get a lot of attacks off. Alright, you, you gotta... You gotta give me a shout out when, when the fights are happening. You gotta tell me so I, I get there. Hopefully I don't miss any more kills. I mean, there's only yes, 14 I, kills, so if I miss one, that's like, I don't know, 6% of the kills I, I miss. I was actually considering calling you for that one, but I wasn't sure like what XXS was doing, because he was just like going into the lane yeah. on his own, and I was like, that could also are you really lead, gonna make the solo kill? That could also lead into a feed, so you definitely call me on that, because okay. uh, I, I, I want to be there when the feeds happen. It's a BKB for Doom as well. Um, again, it's like for me, this reinforces that they they see themselves as wanting to hit an earlier timing. That's you don't like rush the BKBs on your cores when your plans to sit around and just farm against their farm. Mm -hmm. So even though LGD have a lot of scalability in their lineup, it seems like they're not they're, they're not consenting to the you farm we farm game. They do actually want to be closing out the game. Yeah, I mean, basically they're saying we don't want to play. On your terms, we want to play on our terms. And our terms being, we buy enough BKBs, we just walk up to your high ground, you can't fight us, and then we win. That's what LGD's game plan is. We'll see whether it works. LGD, again, to remind viewers that are just popping in, they are down one game in this best of three series, and we are in the Chinese qualifier for Summit 5, phase number one. They need to win this game and the next uh, to move on to phase two. And, uh,. I gotta say, they look pretty good in this game though, but it's... I mean, it's only a 300 goal lead. Or, sorry, 3000 goal lead. I'm surprised that it's only a 3000 goal lead. Yeah, that's... It's, the thing that's worrying is that because the lead is so small, because the split push is going on all the time, if they were to go high ground, and also because they invested in like these early game builds of the early BKBs, mm. if they were to go high ground and somehow get repelled and like lose a big fight pushing the high ground, that could, then that could IG are in control yeah. of the game. Yeah. So my question is, like... Do you think that IG would have been able to got these outer towers without getting the two BKBs? Uh, maybe not. You don't think they would be able to get the tower? Maybe not, actually. You, you, think, you think that IG will say, look, Shadow Fiend and Doom, they don't have BKB, let's go fight. Uh, no, actually, sorry, I, I misunderstood what you're asking. I, I think LG would have gotten the towers anyway. Regardless I, of I don't the think BKB, IG... Right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now thinking back to that, if you know you really are just gonna get the tower without the BKBs, you could have got the SMY first, for example, on sorry, you could have got the Manta first on Shadow Fiend instead of the BKB. Yeah. And that would have sped up to your, your farm and that would have allowed you to get to your BKB faster. The the reason I really personally dislike BKB first as an item is sure you're very, very strong for a point, but you sacrifice the rest of your game by just not getting that early farming item. Top lane here, looks like we oh, are gonna go. see that initiation. Can we have enough burst damage? Yes we can! Barely! That's gonna be enough shout. It comes in with the BKB, sure. You're gonna get Bobuka. IG Bobuka signed up for this. He knows what's gonna happen. That's a trade that they're willing to take. 
the funny thing is, the BKBs don't actually help against these kind of players. Like, imagine if Ember had a BKB there, he'd still die. You know, if they were going on Doom, if they were going on SF, they'd still die. Because their plan is to blink in with Lion Hex you. Everyone else blinks in on top and you just get burst down. Th those are the kind of plays they're actually making. So, for the BKB builds for LG to justify himself, I really do think their plan was to, maybe at the time of the second rush, which hasn't happened yet, actually go high ground and force IG to try and take them on and then show the power of the fact that we have all these BKBs you can't take us on. Right. But they need to, like they need to actually get that kind of movement going because you know I was talking about they tried to go high ground, they failed, then suddenly IG's in control. The way the game's going right now, IG are sort of gradually just gaining control anyway, passively. Yep. Well the problem is basically the only way you could actually get to high ground is if you could get the wave push the pass, right? It's really, really hard to push waves when there's Lion and Lena, like they're best buddies for the rest of the game because it doesn't matter who, you know, trying to counter the split push from the side of LGD. If you get Blink Hex from Lion, you're just dead. Finger and Laguna is just going to be enough. And now you also have a, a Blink and Shadow Blade slot out to deal with. He's super farmed. Like oh my this, god. You can see, like, IG's builds are just, they're completely itemized to split up and, like, sneak around the map and get pick offs while Naga split pushes and farms. I mean, how much does this Roshan matter? Doesn't matter. Well, well, what did they do when they got the last Aegis? They really didn't get anything with it. Right. They wouldn't have gotten without it. So Actually, is MLY it's, gonna it's... die? Yeah, he's gonna die. The Nog came in. Radiance burn and Riptide. All right. Yeah, this that's... is not good times here for LGD. They don't. They don't even get the Roche. This is a worrying position for LGD to be in. And I mean, the other two matches LGD played in this tournament against decent teams, like Avicii not looking that good, CDC Youth looking very good. LGD were quite commanding. They were, yeah. they dominated those teams, but IG are looking the stronger team in this match, certainly in the first game. In the second game, they've they've kind of made easy work of transitioning from their plan A to their plan B. Like, I, I definitely thought that there was room for LGD to give them more trouble in between. And, you know, LGD felt that the way to do it is by the BKB, is group up, but as you said, IG were going to ignore them anyway. IG did ignore them, and you know we, we're saying LG getting a rush wouldn't be a big deal. I think IG getting a rush actually is quite a big deal. I mean, is it though? Like, it just basically means LG can't push for five minutes, right? Which I don't think they are. Yeah. They were able to push within the five minute mark either. Oh, here we go. We're going to see a fight. QD gets doomed up. He goes for the Roshan. Neta Strike's actually going to bring them out. The song secures them the ages, and now they can let him up if they want. The song does end. The rest of people are re-engaging, and this is a kind of a cluster of a fight here. They brought up Bobocha. This is the first fight we've seen in a long while. I don't think this is IG's game plan. They lose a couple here right from the get-go, and we do see the TP back out. It's just a two-for-one. The waves are not pushed for LGD, so even though they won the fight, they can't do anything off of it. Sorry, three-for-one I mean, if you count the ages. So, I still think that's fine for IG. It's yeah. maybe even a win for IG, and this is what I was saying. Like, The reason it's big for IG to kill Rush is because Maybe we think LGD, even with Rush, won't be able to go high ground. But the point is, without it, they definitely can't. Sure. And every time you take out the Rush, it's like an extra 10 minute window where they definitely can't do what they need to do. So that makes the game a lot better for IG. So even though they lose a fight, they get the Rush out of the way, the Aegis doesn't go the other way, and that's like a huge gap that they gain in the game. Yeah, I, I don't actually, I don't think they've lost a fight. It doesn't matter if you go for a 3 for one trade, as long as Naga is not one of those that die. Like. Naga being able to push the wave and you don't lose any like more structural damage on your tier 3, you're absolutely fine with that. Again, look at the look at the creep wave. Right? It's just like on the radiant side of the map. Yeah, and the the worrying thing now for LGD is so their plan A has pretty much failed as well now. <laughs> their plan B is Ember Spirit, that's what I think. But it's much harder for Ember Spirit to get insane amounts of farm than it is for Naga Siren because all the uh, other heroes were top lane. Great BKB timing from maybe. Looks like he's going to be able to just man fight and kill the line. They'll get more. XSS is going to get uh, well, chained up. That's going to be a secondary so, kill. Okay. So if you get your BKB off before line hexes you, then suddenly the item really does work against yes. what IG are trying to do. Uh, Mere Mortals normally can't get it off, but he's maybe. He's got the faint fast yep. fingers. But again, look at the wave. Like mid's pushing in now. Bottom sort of pushing in. So what I want to say is the Ember Spirit, if he gets super farmed, can maybe like put up a fight against the Naga, especially because I, th I would say that the, the extra carry potential from his teammates is higher than IG's. You know, like oh, the Naga's sure. got less yeah. other carries on her team. But it's actually just really difficult for Ember Spirit to get that the amounts of farm that Naga's getting. I mean, not least because he doesn't have like 
Octary and Manta Illusions spam all around the map because he going into a, a lane on his own to farm is very very dangerous. Like yeah. he's he's bought an ultimate orb. I imagine he'd probably actually buy Lincoln's here, 100% not a Manta style. Lincoln's. 100% Lincoln's. Because he just that's what he needs to actually go farm lanes. Otherwise, the other four heroes in IG's lineup is all about. It's maybe, I mean, we talk about how they had this like ganking plan A and Naga plan B, but the plan A synergizes with the plan B in, the, in this exact way that while your Naga's farming, they can't do the farm trade as efficiently as you because if they're completely split up farming different lanes, they're gonna die. Bobuka might be just dead here. He's got the Shadow Blade, they're so close, and here comes the strike. Bobuka dead once again. Again, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, it's. I mean, the the Dota two announcer keeps saying ownage as if LGD are owning, but that's. <laughs> I don't think they are owning. I think. I agree with you. Like it's it is an interesting change in the dynamic that they're the ones making the pickoffs, but it's it's not getting them any closer to being ahead in the game. All right, so, I remember the heyday where, literally everybody picked Naga, where games went like 60, 70 minutes possibly longer like 80 90 and one of the points that generally do come up in the kind of the ultra late game and we're not there yet is the naga taking so much farm not necessarily because she need gold but she needs to basically keep all the waves pushed out right because that's her own defense mechanism the rest of your teammates just don't have enough farm to go into the late game do you think that's going to be a worry for uh for ig as we do see xss Probably gonna die here, unable to blink out, and uh, aggressive finds himself yet another kill. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, we've seen teams a bit more responsible with this kind of gold abuse recently. So, once Naga's maxed out, she'll probably be spamming wards for everyone, and right. that'll help uh, quite substantially for supports to get items if they just don't die and they don't have to buy the wards. So, it, I don't think it necessarily has to be a huge deal. Um, by the way, Ferrari's been chipping down this bot tier 3. Quite substantially, it's like half HP now, less than half HP. So while those pickoffs were happening, he he wasn't just getting farm. He actually, you know, made some work towards an objective. But Rong's got a gem. IG, I think, even though they know that it's not crucial to their plan, they don't want to get picked off over and over. So they're gonna try and like get some map control. They they do want to be the ones who are threatening the pickoffs rather than the ones being picked off, yeah. regardless of whether it's the Naga. And and the Shadow Blade choice on Xiaowei has really done that for them, right? Just the fact that he's be able to be invis and walk around, and you know, I just got the gem on Naga. Technically, they have a way to deal with them, but not really. Like he's found, I don't know how many kills now, three, four, and there's some next level warding, like basically trying to find uh, areas where the line and the Lina might hide, and you just get a free pick off. Cause they got a they got a little bit of beacon of TP up there as well for aggressive. Yeah, that, that little mud golem like could potentially do a lot of work. Sure. I wonder if somebody made the following play in a pro Dota where the mud golem walks in, drops a drops a stun, you disassemble your helm of dominator, right? So the mud golem dies. Do you still have to control yes. the two small ones, right? You, I think yes. you do. Yes, right? you do. I've, and then you, I've you seen Artizi do it. There, oh, right. okay. There's a clip of Artizi doing it. I see, I see. Um, Hold that thought. A fight might be breaking out here. QD coming in. There's a TP coming in into, onto Bobuka. Bobuka drops the finger of death. I don't know if you want to fight this. He TPs in and song him immediately. He pops a Manta style, but he might actually just get doomed up. Ferrari now on the run. Xiaowei comes in with a Shadow Blade. He could get off the Doom. He's got the movement speed. Doom. And now here comes the... Oh, actually, he wants to fight this. And Ferrari wins this because he does have the gem. All right? That was some weird play. The fight's not over just yet. Ferrari gets found again. They ping him out. They want him dead. Ferrari down to about 25% health. But his teammates are coming in. Maybe he's dropping low. He can't get off his ultimate. Aggressive's going to die as well. Lina do so much Raikou damage. MMI comes up with the birds. He cleans up. Ferrari's still alive. And he's regen thanks to the fact that he does have the Octarine. The net's gonna cancel the TPs. The birds are trying to keep him alive, but the Naga illusions are doing so much work. He's gonna summon more illusions, and he just got a team wipe. Double kill, and he could now just push the high ground like the old old Dota way. You know, yep. I, I, so thought, everyone, I thought this yep, game was gonna to just like go into a farming mode for the next 40 minutes, but apparently I actually thought they could fight, and they can fight. People, I mean, people talk about Manta Octarine and how, like, Naga with the Radiance Manta Octarine can lock down the map and just push all the waves. 
But it's also it also is really good in fighting. And what happened there is Ferrari's running in and out of the fights and getting a lot of regen, even just off his illusions, radiance damage. And if you don't, you know, once you confront this Naga Siren, you you gotta kill it. You it's like a Slark or Alchemist or something. It works the same way. Where like, it's just its HP is constantly going back up in these fights, and the damage output is far too much for you to deal with. If, you don't finish off. I think the really big problem in that fight for LGD is Xiao had got into a great position and didn't have mana to Doom. That's like, if he gets the Doom off on the Naga Siren, they kill the Naga, there's no fight for IG at all. But I, I don't know what he was doing before the fight. Before, I think he TP'd into the fight, so maybe he had been farming and using his mana farming. But he, as a Doombringer, I think that is something that you have to be aware of. Like, you, you, can, you can never go into a fight without mana to Doom. Like, maybe it's p potentially used the Scorched Earth, and like, that was like a bit too much. Too much mana to have mana for both. Shadow Blade also doesn't help the fact that it does cost quite a bit of mana, especially for Doom. So. Yeah, so you can imagine he had he had an, enough mana to Doom, uses a Shadow Blade and Scorched Earth, and suddenly doesn't, and I mean, just no Doom at all in the fight. Yeah, we saw at the beginning of the fight where maybe it was actually chunking him quite a bit with that uh, MKB. But, uh, like you said, there's just. Is it possible? I, I didn't see, but is it possible Ferrari's illusions were attacking him, and that's why he lost mana? Mm, maybe? Because, I mean, he does have the Fusal yeah. Blade, so that's like... Like that would explain. I mean, from, the, from uh, the Naga? Yeah, I like, guess. while you're chasing me to do me, my illusions just get rid of your mana. Yeah. Looks like we're gonna see yet yeah, another fight breaking out. The charge is gonna go on the Vengeful Spirit. It's gonna stun Doom halfway. They're gonna find Doom, and Doom gets blown up. No, he gets swapped back out right now. It's gonna be September. That's gonna be dead now. Doom walks back in, tries to drop off the Doom, but can't. Oh no, this. Oh, he actually drops it off on the on the uh, slaughter, but it doesn't really matter because it's the slaughter and not the Naga. The song not really doing too much, but. Right now, they're having a lot of trouble dealing with these Naga Illusions. Maybe getting picked off again. The Slide of Fist is going to be able to kill a Lion. But, again, Ferrari doesn't care. He's alive. He's yep. pushing. The song just let them reset. Let them, like, regroup. Decide, like, what they wanted to do. And they look very composed and they go back in. So, I think they could push a bit more here. This is the aggressive TP to the bot lane. Of course, he'll have a Remnant to jump back to if he needs to. Does he? Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah. he'll, he'll need That's to. That's Well, illusions are not really being split up, but there's no Ember Spirit here. They really punish it. Range racks down to about half HP. And I do believe that's a correct racks to start with, because this is not where you kind of push down the racks in one go. You gotta have to slowly whittle it down. And the range racks won't reach Yeah, it's, it's actually really good composure shown from this team. And, you know, we talked about yesterday are they young or are they not? I mean, the, the players have been around for a while, but they. They don't have those kind of veteran credentials. They don't have those like big LAN appearances to their name except for Ferrari. So to me, it's impressive when a team like that shows the patience of like, okay, the game's going really well for us. We, we don't need to end right now. We can slowly but surely get there. Yeah. And now they're going to get that Aegis. So that effect that you had, uh, you talked about earlier, where IG is not even going to be threatened. Well, IG was never really threatened for the past, I don't know how long. Unfortunately for, for QD, as he picks up the Aegis, he loses like so much items because he's full. He drops Hyperstone as well as the Echo Saber, just to make room for his new items. Yeah, that's kind of awkward. I mean, what's he... How is he meant to hold? <laughs> like, I mean, Aegis only takes one slot, right? So. Yeah, I don't know exactly what's happening here. <laughs> he picked up a BKB <laughs> recently trying as well. To... Yeah, I, I think so, because it's not like you can combine your Hyperstone and your I mean, Shadow Blade. I guess or, you'll just make a like, Moon Shard and, and eat, it, eat it. That's like the only way to yeah. free it up. It's probably the plan. There's nothing, is there a reason for him to buy Silver Edge? I mean, Silver Edge always reduces their damage, and it, it's it's not that bad against uh, Shadow Fiend, I suppose. I think it you can take off one of his passives, not the other. I think you could remove the, the Aura, not the, the Necromastery, if I'm right. Yeah. Maybe it's the other way around. All right, range racks went down to birds, or sorry, to to nagas. Yeah, just just naga things. I mean, it's sad for the emperor. Like he literally BLTs in the wave, slights it, and has just to do, like remnant back immediately. As long as Lion is not showing himself, he's got to be wary. Like the Lincoln Sphere in theory protects you, but not really, because a good line just like blows both his spells immediately. And one of them will fall, go through, and then Lina's likely to be there to follow up. So, speaking of Lina, and this is like, I mean, I was talking about the composure of IG, 
like recognizing they can be patient, but we got to mention like psychologically, this is a very difficult game for LGD. There's like it's one of the most frustrating things to be in a position like this as a team where like there's this kind of theoretical hard lockdown, and there's just nothing you can do about it. <laughs> Your lanes are locked, everything's pushing. The enemy team is like they kind of have all the cards in their hand. They get to decide how the game unravels from here. Yeah. Again, I, I'm more surprised for the fact that this is not the traditional Naga lineup where Naga is just the, the, the all the eggs in the Naga basket, right? They're taking the fight to them. In fact, they're going to go up maybe. Well, defensive swap is going to be good for September. They will blow him up immediately. Here comes the Doom here onto uh, the Slaughter. And that actually might turn things around here. Cuties on the run. They won't chase Naga's it. Looks on the mid. mid lane. Naga racks. Song on the bottom. And Lucian's going on to the mid lane. It's the Rat Dota. It's still here. Shadow Fiend's dead somewhere, but I don't care because the Rax is more important. As we do see, XSS is uh, gonna be dead too aggressive. Nice jump to the dodge. They do get the kill. Where's Naga and all of this? Oh, bottom. Just killing and cleaning things up. And now that should be the second lane of Rax. Unless yeah, we see some Yeah, only Spirits and Blizzard are alive. It's definitely not enough to stop them. And yeah. MMR is like. Is he AFK? I don't know. Maybe he thought that was he was illusion. Just not paying attention. It's like, oh, there's no way that, uh, you know, or maybe it was Mike Wong's bird, so it's probably more likely, but this is probably a game. Yeah, this, I mean, they, they can't get Megas, right, because they're still tier 2 on the top yeah. side. Do they need but, Megas? I mean, what I mean is, like, they're not gonna, the game's not gonna end right now, yeah. but I'd, I would agree with your analysis that, like, if you, if I probably mean, like, there's a 90% chance IG are gonna win the game right now. Oh, I just I don't know if it's gonna be right now. I, 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 I feel like it's more than the, 90. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, maybe it is more than 90. I just I just mean like the if the game could still go another 15 20 minutes. It, it's not necessarily over right now. I I don't know. The way that IG's been playing like I think the next opening they see, which is probably when they, you know, get their next set of items, when they group up, they could just go. Now Slaughter gets a okay. Now I don't really know what his item set is going to be. Buys triple Toma knowledge for somebody. He, he sold the Echo Saber, didn't he? Oh, he sold it. Okay. Yeah. Wait, did not And he is solo kills the bench. I don't. Even... Slaughter's a strong hero. I mean, this is Slaughter has more farm than Ember Spirits, and he didn't buy a Midas. He didn't buy a Maelstrom or Battle Fury. He he's just a Slaughter, and he has more farm than the Ember oh. Spirits with the Naga on his team. He's also up to Raxes. Like, I think that's you know a little bit of a disparity. Yeah, that's true. But. But I think having a Naga on your team is like... Right. There's some next level cool. warding happening and they do get the, the double yeah. zap. Aggressive is in a lot of trouble. The fight's gonna break out but you lost your Doom already and so you have the loss of Vengeance. Here comes that Song net I talked about. Nice Manta Disjoint to walk out of it. Song is down so they probably don't push off of this. I say that though, perfectly timed here from Bobaga onto MMY. They will get the tier 2. And the, pro the problem with LGD is like surviving, like they make a big play and the Shadow Fiend survives while he dodges the net, but like surviving is not the big play that wins you the game, you have to do something to actually threaten the Naga, and so far Naga's life has been like totally unthreatened this entire game, zero deaths on Ferrari, there was like one fight he came close to dying where Jait, if he had Doom they probably would have killed him, but it's just been like, they haven't come close to making the Naga afraid, and yeah. They bet if the Naga doesn't die, they're gonna lose their last side of Raxus here. Yeah, I mean, IG literally could, like, have Ferrari to walk in like this song, and then focus on the buildings, which, that's exactly yep. what's happening. Glyph is being forced out, just on two illusions attacking, and now IG backs off. I mean, 40 second cooldown on the song of Cyber, man. Don't, don't wait 40 seconds, they have patience. Now this is fantastic for IG. I really like to see this team succeed. Um, also, like, in some part of me likes to see LGD fail just because, like, I'm one of those people that thinks that definitely they shouldn't have been invited to the major. I still think they're quite a good team. I think they quite possibly would have qualified for it. But it was, like, very obvious to me that Nubi were a stronger team than LGD at the time LGD got invited. And, like, just because they, they got directly invited to a LAN where they did okay. Um, whereas IG is a team that represents the opposite. They've been working very hard. Four of their players have been together for a very long time. Ferrari has been committed to the IG organization for like the, the entire existence of Dota 2. Um, he's, been, he's been to like every TI with IG. It's just... Oh no, wait. Oh, was oh, it? Oh. Can I get the real one? The Doom is gonna go on 430. That warrants a yeah, buyback. He, 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 he dies die? now, I think. 
Does he die? Aggressive's go for it. He has to get. He this should kill. die. Alright, he's dead. Obviously, I, I sang his praise too much. And <laughs> I mean, he just buys back. He's not even worried. He knows Doom's yeah. down, and Doom is the only way to kill him. Alright, this is where like, Shao Wei has a secret refresh orb hidden. He buys back and makes a game turnaround play. No? Alright, that's not happening. You're gonna focus on maybe on the bottom lane, maybe just constantly bash here uh, by the uh, Spirit Breaker. Song ends, BKBs are being popped, there's a buyback on the on the Doom and he is trying to chase. Depending at 430, he's stunned up right now, he doesn't have Song, can he actually die? He doesn't have buyback either, they focus on Alina, Alina drops off the stun. Looks like he's gonna be okay, meanwhile on the back line, oh, it's happening. Lion's Raxing. Yeah, top lane, <laughs> Popoka's going in for the, the Rax <laughs> business, he blinks back out, in fact he will make it home, fine. Oh, that was their opening, that was their only opening on Naga, and they don't get it. In fact they lose, yeah. you know, another set of Rax. There oh. are some Naga illusions there, but the Lion was like spamming stuns on the wave, and... That's one Rax left alive, and at this point it's like, that's a Naga sleep. That's, you know what, like... When I when IG go to push again, I'll literally have to like preemptively BKB before the Naga ulties, because if Naga sleeps you, your last Rax is dead. That's I like think, okay. I think now they're playing with Mega Creeps, right? With the mindset of Mega Creeps. It's not yeah, a matter yeah. of when, right? It just, or it doesn't matter just when. Like this Rax will just go down. So if you're not gonna yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. If you're not gonna GG yeah. out, how do you beat Mega Creeps? That's that's what they need to start considering. I guess you start um, buying Maelstroms, getting Vlads for the team. Get... Uh, and Mistbird has to buy Rapier. That's. Oh, well, he's got the gold. Is. And I don't and think this is. This is something we've seen quite a lot recently, actually. I've seen Embers win plenty with Rapiers, so. Wouldn't be, like, unprecedented at all. Alright. I mean, again, we saw scenarios where Naga was threatened, right? Just earlier in that yep. fight, so. It, it definitely can happen. Yeah, she can die, and if Ember Spirit is a rapier and he gets big crits, like, oh, they're One taking the fight to them. Yeah, IG Raw might be in a little bit of trouble, he's gonna be dead. A nice, uh, nice stop. This is a, none of IG's waves are actually very far pushed in right now. This is like, when last did this happen in the game? Yeah, Ember Spirit has been doing a very actively job, like pushing top, pushing out mid. And you can see Lion, he's just waiting. Oh, he's, if he catches him, Naga can TP onto him. And that's a rapier. Does he see him? Yep. He see him. He'll see him now. All right. Is he gonna go? He doesn't know where the other heroes are, yeah. I suppose. Also, like committing to that and not knowing where Venge is, and if the Venge swap goes off and aggressive, like that could be extremely dangerous. Can I just ask? Has has Ferrari left the fountain? Like he, I I I don't I think, think he has. Literally, he's only staying in the fountain until he has buyback again. You he's know, this like... is this is literally the game-winning play, right? Like. <laughs> <laughs> like, he noticed that it's possible they might actually kill him, and let's just not take any risk at all. <laughs> just play with your illusions. Like, okay, he's he's moving out a little bit. He's. I mean, he's seen the enemy, right? So he doesn't need me to die afraid. So QD takes yeah. out from the team. QD drops a couple of when he dies. I mean, look at Bobocon too. Like, the way that these play, these guys are playing, they know, like how they could win and how they could lose. And they're yeah. just looking for pain. They it's really impressive. It's oh, it's really really impressive maybe? to me because this is a team that has been like their dominant style has been like face rush. It's been classic old IG run at you, make lots of kills, and to show the composure to win this style with the Naga Siren, even though it has the element of aggression built into it, it's I think it's really cool. It shows like a lot of depth to the team. Yeah, it sure does. I mean. I really want to appreciate this, but at the same time, this is also... I mean, it's kind of funny and sad the same way. Because IG literally has got the game won, but not really, not yet. Because, in theory, there's like that 2% that OG could actually win this game. Now that yeah, we have the Rapier pick up. I think it's like, it's 2% while the Rax is alive, and it goes down to probably 1% once the Rax dies, it's like... I mean, do, does Mega Creep actually matter that much? It does a bit, because it means your Ember Spirits like, can't leave the base. Yeah. He, he can only, like, TP to fights. Well, Shadow Blade, not gonna protect wrong. No! He's gonna charge out! He's fine! Go, go, go! He's okay! He doesn't have a TP, so he needs to basically... Oh, bot lane. Shadow Fee might be in trouble. I think Lion could go for this. Okay, decides not to. Do they have... I guess Slaughter's not alive, and... You'd like to have more than one person ooh, able to ooh, TP ooh. to the Lion. Shall we? He's gonna get... Doom? No? 
Yo, fourth generation, no, right? Because his Octarina is giving him that that healing animation. Yeah. But also, I again, I I'm not sure. Like, it's nobody has boots of travel level two on their team, and no. Doom's definitely not going to kill him on his own. <laughs> so that's where at this stage in the game, boots or oh, bot lane, they've actually caught it maybe, and that's a pretty big kill. He does have buyback. Yeah. I mean, is it a big kill though? Like, are they going to push off of this? Shao is going to get found. Oh no, Shao eight dies. Shao is the only thing that's keeping the the. He he doesn't have buyback. Yeah. They they just go end now. Or try to. I mean, sorry, I'm missing kills like literally everywhere, but like, it's hard to catch kills. Okay, like illusions. Like Trying to finish the last rex. And they're missing. He's missing on the illusion. Oh my god, he's gonna get it. All right. All right, now only And there's no doom buyback, yeah. and I'm not sure if IG know that because he's quite close to the buyback. So if they didn't write the exact time, they wouldn't. They wouldn't know. I think. At the same time, this could be just like, hey, we're gonna bait you in and kill your Naga kind of play. So, all right. They'd like to kill SF, okay. he just bought back. All right, defensive swap's gonna be this, September's gonna be dead. The charge is not gonna complete. BKBs are flying out, so none of that soon. Are you gonna just song the fountain? Ferrari's walking in, he's gotta be careful, man. He's actually dropping quite low. They find aggressive, aggressive, he's gonna get blown up. Rapier on the ground, who's- nobody's picking it up, and Gigi's gonna get called. Alright. LGD, you said they need to defend the invites, they they have failed to do so in this tournament. They will not get through to the second phase of the, the Summit 5 Chinese qualifier. Yeah, they will not. IG will be the team to make it through, and in a very convincing, sorry, 2 old fashion, they will join VGR, Wings, and Newbie on phase number two. In fact, they are actually gonna go up against VGR uh, in the first match of phase two. And I do believe that will start on the 23rd of uh, May, so a little bit further away. Tomorrow on this channel, at the same time that we started today, we'll move to the C qualifier. So if you like your Pinoy Dota, our first match is Mineski versus Mineski X. That should be uh, quite a fun game to watch.